Charles Manson was a mass murderer who founded a desert cult known as the Family in the 1960s and manipulated its members into brutally killing people on his behalf, including the pregnant actress Sharon Tate and other Hollywood residents. The crimes inspired Helter Skelter, a best-selling book released in 1974, and an Emmy-nominated TV miniseries by the same name released in 1976. Charles Manson was born Charles Mills Maddox on November 12, 1934 in Cincinnati, Ohio, to 16-year-old Kathleen Maddox, who had run away from home at age 15. Shortly after Charles's birth, she married William Manson. Despite their brief marriage, her son took his name and was known as Charles Manson for the rest of his life. His mother was known to drink heavily and spent periods in jail, including time for a strong-arm robbery conviction in 1940. According to Manson, she had little interest in being a mother. Mum was in a cafe one afternoon with me on her lap. The waitress, a would-be mother without a child of her own, jokingly told my mum she'd buy me from her. Mum replied, a pitcher of beer and he's yours. The waitress set up the beer. Mum stuck around long enough to finish it off and left the place without me. Several days later, my uncle had to search the town for the waitress and take me home. Since his mother couldn't take care of him, Manson spent his youth with various relatives which weren't good experiences for the young boy. His grandmother was a religious fanatic and one uncle ridiculed the boy for being feminine. Another uncle, while Manson was in his care, took his own life after he learned that his land was being seized by authorities. After an unsuccessful reunion with his mother, Manson began to steal at age nine. Three years later, he was sent to Gibault School for Boys in Indiana, which wouldn't be his last experience in reform school. Before long, he added burglary and auto theft to his repertoire. He would escape a reform school, steal, get caught, and be sent back to reform school again and again. When he was 17, Manson drove a stolen car across state lines, earning his first stint in federal prison. During his first year there, he racked up eight assault charges before being transferred to another facility. In 1954, at age 19, Manson was released on parole after an unusual period of good behavior. The next year, he married a 17-year-old waitress named Rosalie Willis, and the two took off for California in a stolen car. Before long, Rosalie became pregnant, which was good for Manson because it helped him get probation rather than prison time for stealing a car. His luck would not last, though. In March 1956, Rosalie gave birth to Charles Manson Jr. one month before his father was sent to prison after his probation was revoked. The sentence this time was three years in Terminal Island Prison in San Pedro, California. After one year, Manson's wife found someone new, left town and divorced him in June 1957. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. In 1958, Manson was released from prison. While he was out, he began pimping in Hollywood. He conned a young woman out of her money and in 1959 received a 10-year suspended sentence for stealing checks from mailboxes. Manson married again, this time to a prostitute named Candy Stevens, and fathered a second son, Charles Luther Manson. She divorced him in 1963. On June 1, 1960, Manson was arrested again and charged with crossing state lines with the intent of prostitution. His parole was revoked and he received a seven-year sentence to be served at McNeil Island Penitentiary in Puget Sound off the Washington State coast. During this term, Manson began studying Scientology and music and he became obsessed with performing. He practiced his music all the time, wrote dozens of songs and started singing. He believed that when he got out of prison, he could become a famous musician. On March the 21st, 1967, Manson was released again from prison. This time he headed to San Francisco, California's Haight-Ashbury district, where with a guitar and drugs, he began to develop a following. Mary Brunner was one of the first to fall for Manson. 
the UC Berkeley librarian invited him to move in with her. Before long, she started doing drugs and quit her job to follow Manson. Brunner helped entice others to join what would eventually be called the Manson family. Lynette Fromm soon joined Brunner and Manson. In San Francisco, they found many young people who were lost and searching for purpose. Manson's prophecies and strange songs created a reputation that he had a sixth sense. He relished his position as a mentor and the manipulation skills he had honed in childhood and prison fueled the attraction of the vulnerable to him. His followers saw Manson as a guru and a prophet. In 1968, Manson and several followers drove to Southern California. In the late 1960s, Manson was still hoping for a music career. Through an acquaintance, music teacher Gary Hinman, he met Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys, who recorded one of Manson's songs under the title, Never Learn Not to Love. Through Wilson, Manson met record producer Terry Melcher, actress Doris Day's son, who Manson believed would advance his music career. When nothing happened, Manson was upset. He and some of his followers moved to Spahn Ranch, which was northwest of the San Fernando Valley. The ranch had been a popular film location for westerns in the 1940s and 1950s. Once Manson and his followers moved in, it became a cult compound for the family. Despite his skill at manipulating people, Manson suffered from delusions. When the Beatles released their White Album in 1968, Manson believed their song Helter Skelter predicted an upcoming race war, which he referred to as Helter Skelter. He thought it would occur in the summer of 1969 and that black people would rise up and slaughter white America. He told his followers that they would be saved because they would hide in an underground city of gold in Death Valley. When the Armageddon that Manson had predicted didn't occur, he said he and his followers would have to show black people how to do it. Just a few weeks before the infamous Manson murders of actress Sharon Tate and supermarket mogul Lino LaBianca and his wife, Manson ordered his follower Bobby Beausoleil to kill his friend Gary Hinman on July the 25th, 1969, an act that would propel the family past the point of no return and into the darkest depths of humanity. The family staged the scene to look as if the Black Panthers had done it by leaving one of their symbols a paw print. On August the 9th, Manson ordered four of his followers to go to 10,050 Cielo Drive in Los Angeles and kill the people inside. The house had belonged to Melcher, who had spurned Manson's dreams of a music career, but actress Sharon Tate and her husband, director Roman Polanski, were leasing it. Charles Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwinkel and Linda Kasabian brutally murdered Tate, her unborn baby and four others who were visiting her. The following night, Manson's followers brutally killed Lino and Rosemary LaBianca in their home. It took police several months to determine who was responsible for the brutal slayings. In December 1969, Manson and several of his followers were arrested. The trial for the Tate and LaBianca murders began on July the 24th, 1970. On January the 25th, Manson was found guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Two months later, he was sentenced to death. Manson was saved from execution when the California Supreme Court outlawed the death penalty in 1972. During his decades in the California State Prison in Corcoran, Manson received more mail than any other prisoner in the US. He was denied parole a dozen times and died, apparently of natural causes, on November the 19th, 2017. He was 83. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have any memories of the Charles Manson murders or that particular time in California when Charles Manson was around? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.